like to do the approval of the minutes on May 19th. Um, move to approve. who's the director of the North Denton Recreation Department. And I see she also has a guest with her. And we'd like you to announce who your guest is. Would you please? Yes, this is Shelby Mishma. She's our assistant uh, recreation director at the office. Thank you for being here, both of you. Mm -hmm. OK, Anne Marie, I'm leaving it all up to you. OK, so here's handouts of the slides that we are going to Great. present. Do you, do you have an extra one? Yep, let's do it. I'll give it to um, Pam Powers. Okay. <coughs> Feel free to jump in with any questions or anything. Um, basically, it's an overview of what our department does and how we operate within the realm of the, of the city and how we work with other departments and, um, and groups throughout the city. So um, first, we have our mission, which is to promote the well-being of the individual in our community by providing a, a wide range of recreational opportunities to meet all ages of the citizens of Northampton and our surrounding area. So we work with not only residents of Northampton, Florence, and Leeds, we also, um, people in surrounding towns have the opportunity to also partake in our program. <laughs> so our full-time staff, we have seven full-time staff in our department. Um, so Shelby, who is here, Eileen Wright um, is our department secretary. Lori Culver does our pool. Erin Carroll and Kathy Weston are our recreation supervisors. They run all of our sports programs, summer camp, and um, special events. They're the direct supervisors of, of those programs and staff. <coughs> Chris Kastek is our um, department clerk and secretary in the office, and then myself. So there's seven of us that work full time um, for the department. We also have a recreation commission. They oversee the operations of the department. There is nine of them. They um, meet monthly, usually the first Monday of every month. Um, it varies though sometimes. And they oversee our budget, the programs that we do. Uh, they set help set policy. And they are, are field and facility usage and much more. So they volunteer for you know, once a month meeting, which turns into a lot more with some of the various committees and things that um, they volunteered us to work on, as you guys do also. Um, the current board is listed there. Tom Parent, Carol Burchin, Mike Laga, Jim Durfer, Dan Smith, Glenn Conley, Tom Dumphy, Joan Finn, and David Cronin. There's lots of years of, um, of commitment from a lot of those people. Some have been on for over 20 years, have been, have been working with the city and giving their time to, to the department, which is really nice. Um, our budget is pretty tiny compared to the overall city budget. Um, we get a certain amount from the city and then through our revolving fund, we um, operate through all those fees that people, that our program, our program participants pay. Um, and so the overall city budget, we, we get over 200000 initially from the city in the, at the beginning of the year. And then at the end of the year, we actually um, return some of the money um, in fees and charges so that our actual budget is um, comes down to around 175000 is what we cost the city for everything we do, which is a really minute part of, of the whole entire budget. 69% um, of our operations are funded through the fees and 31% is funded through the general fund after all is said and done. Shelby, would right. you like to talk about so, where we operate? Yeah, and we're <laughs> going to talk about where we operate. Um, our office, our rec department office, is located on the grounds of Smith Vocational at High School. Um, and that's the only building that we primarily operate out of, but we use all kinds of different community spaces. So we, our programs um, and the pool are mostly for indoor spaces in the um, elementary um, and JFK middle school. 
Um, and then we also utilize other spaces um, for um, for uh, different programs. Um, we are often creative. We sometimes have programs at the Civic Center or um, different other community spaces in the city that we use to run um, some of our things. Um, so, and we coordinate um, a lot of the usage at JFK Middle School, um, the gym and the pool and some of the other things there on the weekends. We have an agreement with um, the school committee for that. Um, and then we also coordinate and schedule the usage of all city outdoor home space. So all this school um, and other facilities we coordinate for the spring and summer when we have lots and lots of kids playing baseball and softball and all that kind of stuff out there. Um, being, being tricky again. Taking out of this one. <laughs> Going in and out. There you go. Hey. And then lastly, we have a cooperative agreement with the park where we run a lot of our camps and special events and new sport programs and things there. It's been a long standing cooperative agreement. It's a great um, collaborative agreement that we have with them. Um, so we also coordinate a lot with the DPW. Um, we don't supervise any of them. A lot of um, different models for parks and recreation um, departments in the Pioneer Valley, but we are just the recreation department, but we coordinate a lot with um, the Parks and Cemetery Division because our existence kind of depends on each other. So they're responsible for the maintenance and the upkeep of all the facilities that we use, but we do a lot of the programming for that. So we work um, very closely about that. Um, and it, we just wanted to say that the Parks and Cemetery Division maintains 135 acres of playing fields structures, an acres of water grounds, five acres of street parks. Um, our beach, the skate park, they do a lot of stuff, plus all the cemeteries. So, um, and as you guys well are, are well aware, there's a lot of people using our facilities, our fields, constantly. So they require a lot of upkeep in, in, in use. So um, it's great that we have that good coordination with them to do that in the future. Any questions on any of that? We also um, work with the Office of Planning and Sustainability, along with the DPW, to do a lot of um, our grant management and applications with Wayne Fight and his office. So we came up with them. Some of the recent grants we've gotten is the Park Parkland Acquisition and Renovations for Communities. So the park grants that we have been very lucky as a community to get pretty much every year for the past few years. And those the park grant has helped um, acquire a, a part of the Florence Recreation Fields. It's helped, um, it, it was part of, um, it, we're applying for it for Pulaski Park for the renovations coming up. Um, it was part of the Boathouse at one point. So it's every year um, we've been really lucky because our community qualifies so highly for the, the grant that we've been able to get that from the state each year. We, get, we have CPA funds, which the law changed for CPA, um, which was wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, within the past two years. It changed so that not only can CPA, the used to be CPA was only able to use to get new parks or play, playgrounds, so we really couldn't um, tap into the funds, and now CPA can be used for existing parks and playgrounds um, to do um, renovations. It's not for regular maintenance type things, but it is for renovations and things. So the CPA grant has been used recently for a great deal of <coughs> projects that we're involved in. And then we also have received the Common Backyard Playground Grant, which is going to be utilized to put in um, a place, some kind of playground at Lampern Park, which is in front of Bridge Street School, as well as start out the playground at the Florence Rec Field um, up there. So that's all going to be kicking off um, very soon and be built hopefully August and September. Mm -hmm. Those will start going in. So our current project is a picture of the Florence Rec Field there. The little one on the left is when we started out with the, all the bulldozers and everything ready to go. And on the right is, you um, can't see it that well, but all the soccer goals are up and things, and it looks really nice. The grass, we, we, we're not in acceptance yet, but we're very close to accepting it from the contractor. Um, the city would then take over um, maintenance of, the DPW would take over the maintenance of the fields, and then the plan is to open them next spring, in spring of 2015, because they really have to sit a lot of them were seeded, a lot of the area was just seeded this spring, last fall and this spring. It really takes a good year for it to take hold. So um, that project is 
that's going on now. We also have the playground to put in there still and a bathroom slash concession building. We still have to go out to bid for and we're almost done with that design. Then we have to find more money. And then um, we'll, we'll hopefully get that built um, this fall or early spring next year because that's a really, a really neat building. And that would help house some of the DPW equipment there that they're hopefully going to be getting. A um, couple of the other projects going on is I mentioned the playground. Um, the boathouse on Damon Road, we've, um, the Office of Planning has really been leading that and taking the reins, but um, we're involved with it somewhat also. And that's uh, some pictures from just last week down there. There's a ramp built that's it's not finished yet, but it's going in down to the water, and it's just an absolutely beautiful area that we're working with Northampton Community Rowing and that group with to um, eventually have some of their programming out of there, and they would help to maintain and take care of the area and be, and be a presence there also. So it's just it's really nice down there. Mm -hmm. The river is a, is a, is a beautiful area. Um, Plasky Park renovations, the DPW, Jim Lorilla is actually leading that, and I know you guys have been at some of the uh, meetings at um, the Senior Center. So there's one more meeting coming up um, next week um, for that to kind of start finalizing those plans and start writing, going through the and planning for that. And then we're putting in a baseball field at Veterans Field that's been in line for years now, and we're finally um, just about, the, the bid is just about done, and that should be going to bid very soon. Okay. Outdoor places. So we wanted to just list out for you guys all the different um, facilities that we do have yeah. um, in Northampton, and each one and what and what they do have to offer. So main field, um, we have one lit softball field, any night you'll find um, mostly men playing softball down there, but sometimes co ed too. Um, a pavilion that uh, we rent out quite frequently to different groups and, um, for graduation parties, like our first staff parties down there. Um, volleyball courts, um, a horseshoe pit, Arcanum Field. Um, there's two baseball fields there, um, playground, swings, um, basketball courts, and of course, Daisy Village. <laughs> um, we're getting gearing up for a start in a couple weeks here. Um, Ray Ellerbrook Field. For um, Burt's Pit Road in Florence, um, there's a multi purpose playing field there and a softball field. Um, Sheldon Field, there's two softball fields, a baseball field, basketball courts, a park and ride lot um, down there. And Veterans Field is a skate park. Um, Amory was just talking about the baseball field that we're going to be putting back in there. Um, basketball courts and a small um, playground down there. And then the Florence Recreation Field, very exciting. The five multi purpose fields and two baseball fields and a playground and concessions. For, for there. Um, and then we also um, schedule um, school fields, which I kind of touched base on that we coordinate with the TPW. So we also utilize all the school fields too. Um, and Northampton High, the two um, baseball fields there, and then field hockey, um, all the fields out, out behind JFK Middle School and the facilities there. We have lots of tennis programs going on those courts um, after the high school season is over. Then we use the outfield there for. Soccer, lacrosse, field hockey, ultimate frisbee. Um, Leeds is used as a soccer field. Ryan Road, there's four baseball fields. Well, five baseball fields. One's a little bit larger than the other. And then the fall leaves for football, ultimate frisbee, and soccer. And um, Jackson Street, um, there's a 60 foot softball field there. Um, and soccer and lacrosse play in the outfield. And then Bridge Street Elementary School, the Amory was talking a little bit about the common backyards grant. And the so these, these, that's a list of places we program at per se. There's still a lot of little parks and things that aren't listed on there that the DPW takes care of that on um, um, the one Agnes Fox. Agnes, like Agnes Fox. You know, we don't do the programs there, but that's a park. So there's a few parks that we don't program at that the DPW takes care of, and we didn't include those on there. But there's how, how about Ryan Road? Did you take care of that? Um, we program there. We just program the fields. But the, D the DPW takes care of them when there has to, has to be like lined for a baseball game or um, mow, they do the mowing of the base field and things like that. And we put our programs there. The Board of Public Works yep. does the mowing? Well, yeah, they do the mowing at most of the schools, I believe, on the big, on the big areas with the big mowers. And then the school's department has their own maintenance crew that does um, maintenance of the smaller areas. Because I know there were some concerns in regards to Ruth McGrath, she's a cross guard at Ryan Road, and maybe you can speak about it, Ruth, of your sure. concerns. Sure, I've been taking pictures and videoing 
the field when I'm there in the morning, they come every Tuesday, every Wednesday, and every Thursday, rain or shine. Mow the field three days in a row, the entire field takes at least four DPW guys full time. The chalk lines are fine. They rake out the chalk line, put in new chalk lines. The next morning they redo what they did the day before, yep. even though they look like brand new. Pouring rain or not, it could be yep. pouring rain, rain all day. I've watched guys out there with a push lawn mower mowing the field and holding it with the wheels on the front up in the air, just pushing it along, having a good time. Yeah. I've watched guys on the riding mower doing wheelies in the field. Yeah. I've watched him roll it down the hill. He jumped, luckily, in time he didn't get hurt. Yeah. But, I mean, all this yeah, is going on three days a week without fail, like clockwork. Two weeks ago, I went on the city's website and put it out on that part where you can make suggestions. And I noticed they changed the time they do it. They don't do it while I'm standing there anymore. But I live right there, so I still yeah. see them. They just don't realize that. Yeah, that's the DPW's um, parks and cemetery division who do most of it. I don't know if the school division does some of it, but that would be something to, you know, get in touch with the DPW and the, um, the school department division, which is part of Central Services. Um, they work under them at Central Services for all the school, like custodians and maintenance people and things. Yeah, it's, it's so they, they're the ones they do, do that. Yeah. I mean, I've seen them out there with rakes trying to rake the water out of the baseball diamond. Yeah, well, I know they do have to try to get, with the baseball diamond themselves, they do have to try to get the water out of there if they can, if they're supposed to be games that night. It's still pouring so, rain, and it's going to yeah. rain all day and all yeah. night, and they're out there trying to get yeah. the water off and put chalk lines out, and they wash away as fast as they do it. Yeah. You know, That's I mean... Every are you, are you planning on doing programming at, at Lamfront? So is that for the Lamfront or for, is that the bridge, the actual bridge street? That's area? the um, front area, and we're not actually, no, it was kind of on there. I was like, okay, the playground's getting yeah. put in, and yeah. the, the school does, so it probably shouldn't be on there for programs. We won't have, like, soccer come there or anything like that. Okay. But it was kind of like, oh, yeah, the playground's so coming in there. So right. as part one of the schools, yeah. all the different schools have little things. So I'm like, oh, bridge street has a playground coming that, you know, to kind of, right. we sort of separate it out in our own. Um, in our brochure, what things have, you know, what amenities and, and things. So that will, yeah, we, there will not be programming. Yeah. Uh, Just do for the school that's during the day. Right. They have gym PE out there and stuff. Right. And I do know yeah. for a fact with baseball fields, they need a tremendous amount of care. Oh, yeah. There is no question about it. Yeah, yeah that's, that's one of the hardest things this, this spring and, and the beginning of the summer that we do. I, I, got calls all weekend because people, you know, it rained Friday night, they want their mm -hmm. games to be played Saturday morning, but there's literally some Saturdays and Sundays they have 15 fields to do. Yeah. And so it's like, all right, so where do they start? Who do they pump the water off first? Where do they go? And some fields they just say aren't playable. Some fields they work really hard to get the water off. So it's really, it's really hard, but, you know, more, more people would be what they need, but they just don't have it. So, but the other stuff during the week is, is the mowing and thing, and that's, that's separate from getting the ball field ready. Thank yeah. you for yep. at least speaking to Ruth. Yeah, and and no problem. So, okay, so indoor spaces? Um, so you can, you can go. Okay. Keep going. Um, You're on a roll. <laughs> uh, we run the Aquatic and Family Center at JFK Middle School um, when school is not in session. So we operate um, 53 hours a week. We average out when school is not in session. Early in the mornings from 5.30 till about 8, and then um, 3 to 9 every night and then on the weekends. Um, so we also use the gym there. We rent that out to lots of groups, and that um, uh, brings an additional income for them. Um, and then we program the city school gyms um, during the winter time. Um, so when they're not, again, when they're not in use by the schools, we program those because there's, um, as you know, lots of different groups who want to get in to use our city facilities. Um, the next slide are some of our fun pictures we wanted to share with you. Um, these are real pictures of kids enjoying our programs. Um, and we just wanted to share with you some of the, hit on each thing that we do. But these are youth sports that we do. Um, basketball teams, there's a number of 40 basketball teams. Um, right now we're currently in t-ball, um, coaches pitch in softball season. Um, and in the fall we have soccer. Um, we have an ultimate frisbee team that's been that's a new trend in New England and across the country, the ultimate frisbee, so we're happy to offer that to kids. 
Um, tennis lessons at JFK Middle School. We have track that's currently going on. Um, junior cycle cross, which is a, a cool program that we hold at Book Park, um, which is uh, combines mountain biking um, and um, racing, essentially. So that's a new program that we collaborate with Northampton um, Cycling Club on to run for the community. Um, golf lessons we offer for adults, youth, um, and flag football we have in the fall. And we have also middle school field hockey. And that's not an all-inclusive list that um, we're always looking to add new things, but that's what we have going on. That's a really extensive program that you guys run. My daughter is super psyched for soccer. She did pre-K soccer. She took K soccer in the fall, and she can't. She keeps asking me, like, is it time? Nice. <laughs> and these are the ones that um, we run directly. There's also a variety, which we'll have a list later, of the different um, groups we collaborate with. But these are the ones we run directly, actually take the money and registration. Um, there's a whole bunch of other groups out there that are volunteer groups that they um, believe. Usually themselves. run by groups of parents. So these are some of our adult sports and some, of the, some pictures from things recently. Um, and we have lots of softball leagues in the fall and um, in the summer for both men and co-ed. Um, we have a co-ed volleyball league in the winter time, uh, mostly held at Smith Oak. Men's and women's pick up basketball that goes on year round um, at JFK Middle School. Um, and again, all kinds of tennis lessons and tennis classes um, from classes that you can do with your child to a tennis league. Um, and then also open basketball. And that's all with fees, correct? Yep. Yep. Um, and then again, more about um, some of the stuff we do at um, JFK Middle School. Um, we run the pool there, so we offer swimming lessons water aerobics classes. We have three water aerobics classes that are often full with various um, aging. Uh, recreation, lap and recreation swimming. We sell memberships to people who can just want to come and exercise and do their lap swimming and um, there's quite a few of those so that's open certain times for people to do that. We have youth diving classes. Um, we teach uh, youth how to become lifeguards. We have lifeguard training classes which um, is kind of a feeder program for our staff um, but it worked out good as a service for me too. And then we have things like kayak polo, who rents the pool in the, in the winter time in the evening. Um, we rent the facility out to people who want to have birthday parties, and then people like Girl Scout groups or different groups who just want to come in with their group and um, swim and have some pizza, we do that as well. And then we have um, a, an adult knitting class that's been going on for probably 10, 12 years. It's just a hardcore group of people that meet every Wednesday night to knit. So it's really any, anything. And then we also have lots and lots of special events. And we listed up there some of them, Boston sports trips. Um, new this year, in honor and memory of Ray Ellibrook, we have a memorial golf tournament um, in July um, that we're actually fundraising money to um, help supplement field maintenance in the city. So that's a really new, exciting thing we're doing. Um, salute to Summer is something at 1812. They're um, hosting with us to raise money for the Florence Field. Um, first, we're going to talk a little bit about the um, money that we're raising there. So that's another community collaboration we do. The Family Fourth is coming up in a couple weeks, and we're excited about that. Um, the Egg Hunt, um, we, is in April, the Memorial and Veterans Day Parades we're involved in. There's a picture on the top right um, of Mayor Narcoitz that was um, at the, uh, the Veterans Day Parade. I think we drew, drove our new bus in there with kids <laughs> this year, <laughs> waving out the windows. And I'm sorry about that, yeah. yeah. And that was, that was great, very successful. And then, you know, we try to, we do some things around the holidays. So a Halloween, we had a Halloween monster mash, Cupid's family dance, uh, turkey sports shoot. We do ice cream bingo in the wintertime. We do a, a, a it's called the Mayor's Youth Dance, but it's a um, eighth grade dance at the Garden House every May for the eighth graders at, J at JFK Middle School. Um, and we have other golf tournaments. Um, we have been doing an annual road race, and then we also have the Blasky Park tree lighting here in the tradition first week in December. And then now we're super busy gearing up for our summer camps, which is one of my favorite times of the year. But we have, you know, in any given week, 400 kids um, out enjoying doing wholesome recreation activities. So there's, we offer stuff for kids ages four all the way up through 10th grade for day camps. And they're listed there, the top left. And then we also have summer sports and drill, skills and drills programs, which are more focused on sports, but also offer kids this opportunity to get out and do something. So I love all the pictures of the kids. 
Um, and Musani Beach, we run Musani Beach. It's been open since Memorial Day on the weekends. Next week it's open full time, seven days a week. Um, and we're pretty fortunate to have a beach like that right here in Northampton. Um, and we are, it's staffed by our lifeguards and it's tested um, weekly. It is complies with the local and state regulations for beach operations. Um, and so really, uh, a lot of families utilize that um, in Northampton as a as a place, an inexpensive place to cool off with their families, and our summer camps use it a lot as well. So it's fortunate to have that. Um, and then here's, we, we just want to throw in some other unique programs that we do. We do some Play Well Lego program, karate, after school skiing. Um, we take advantage when the kids are out of school. We always try to um, come up with an affordable option for families, so we run vacation week programs. Our schools out programs, which are days when they have the random days off of school, we'll have offer some kind of program for parents who are working to put their kids in. Um, we have counselor and training programs along with our camps to for younger people to try to teach them and give them an opportunity a little bit to work with kids. Um, and then we train um, our coaches, our volunteer coaches. As you can imagine, we need a lot for all those sports programs, so we do that. Um, and then we also supervise and coordinate the Northampton Community Garden. <laughs> um, so this is a list of just some of the groups. I'm sure we've missed a few, but um, these are all some of the different groups that we team up with, we work with to help um, offer these these programs and different things to the community. So you can see all the different organizations listed there that we do. You can see um, when I mentioned earlier, there's different leagues that are run um, with private leagues, meaning they have vol they're all volunteers who give tons and tons of time to the to the city and the youth of the community to help run um, and give. You know, it, it's not their full time job; they do it nights and weekends and, and all day sometimes to help run some of the different leagues that are listed there. So we collaborate with them and help them with scheduling and um, we know. <coughs> try to logistically get everybody to fit the big puzzle over it so everybody can play you know, when they want to. So those are all the different organizations that we work We also sit on some of their boards to help them in any way we can with, with organizing and running their leagues. So we also offer um, scholarships and fee assistance to, to families. So we try, I mean, at whenever possible, which um, sometimes for summer camps we just run out of our, our allotment of scholarships, but we usually can, can do something for people. Um, but last, last year it was over $5,000 of financial assistance. Um, and in the winter time, it, we also we have some different funds that people will donate to for, for, um, for different um, sports programs and things. So we always try to give at least half a scholarship to everybody. And our, our programs are really pretty affordable for the most part. Um, so we try to help people in that sense whenever assistance is needed. So. <coughs> so we have a new Friends of Recreation Committee um, that is a committee, they are going to be doing fundraising and support of the department um, and, and the city's maintenance and needs of labor for um, current and future recreational activities in the city. So we've been wanting to do this for a while. Shelby's worked really hard on um, getting the Articles of Incorporation together with um, some of the volunteers who are on this friendly committee. Um, they were filed this May, so we're waiting to um, hear about the incorporation. Then we'll have a 501c3 status. They will have that, which is key to getting many, many more grants than what we currently um, qualify for. So we have a group, a group of 8 to 10 um, real qualified and dedicated people who are um, going to help with that. And we're always looking for more if anybody knows anybody who wants to help. Um, so they're going to be doing more grants, more fundraising, and the first project they're um, going to be working on is at Florence Field to raise money for more amenities there that um, we just didn't have enough funds to do yet. So that is a very big leap. <coughs> so just some little fun facts. So we, um, with all the people who use the different facilities in the summer, we issue over 2,000 field permits each year people calling and wanting to get their practices and their games in different um, fields, baseball fields, soccer fields, softball fields, football, all that. Um, our account has over about 15,000 eggs. 
that we spread around at Lick Park. Um, we employ over 50 area youth, um, youth each summer, plus the others throughout the year at the pool and different um, times of the year. So do that. Um, we do receive, a, there's a great um, many community donations from businesses and groups to help fund programs and sponsor teams. Uh, this past year, it's over $12,000 in actual monetary donations, like $800 to sponsor the hats for T-ball or $100 to sponsor that basketball team and your name gets on the back of the shirt. So we have a really great community support, I mean, in this community of um, supportive people who um, pretty much you ask them for things and a lot of times they'll come through and help. So it's really nice. So on there, there's just some different um, comments that we get from people throughout the year about um, that. We often program. send out um, evaluations at the end of every program. Um, and we usually send out a little postcard that they can just drop in the mail. And then we will pay for the postage. And uh, we're always looking to improve on things and, and what was good experience and what was not. And so these were some of the really positive things that we got from that we wanted to share with you. I want to thank you, Marie, and I want to thank you for doing this presentation. It's extremely helpful, and I think, and hopefully we are being videoed, at least I know with Ruth's, and may I ask who you are, please? I'm 22, but we're actually here just about the uh, rail being set up for, like, different restaurants. Oh, yeah, that, that's nothing new. We've done that last year. Okay. But well, no, but that's great. All right, we're covering. That's the next group. Yeah. Okay. That's not me. Okay. <laughs> um, so my yeah, question Shelby, is, I want to thank Shelby for she put together very a lot of the. Um, yeah. I would really suggest that at some point to come to City Council mm -hmm. and ask our Council President Bill Dwight to place you in and do a presentation and show the public this. I mean, yeah. this is really helpful. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for coming to talk to us today. It's what, I assume you're always busy, but this maybe is like the busiest time of year. It is, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. So, absolutely. Thank you for taking yeah. this time. We really, really yeah. appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just had a couple of quick questions. So I was interested about, so the board, you said that some people have been on for 20 years. Mm -hmm. or that's <laughs> amazing. I mean, that's an amazing commitment that someone's made. And it's like, what's the process for bringing in new board members? Or, yeah, every, every, pretty much, Within the past, you know, 10 years or so, every, they're, they're um, I think they're up every two years, if I want to say, two or three years, and then there's always someone, we have someone leaving now, and people have applied, they've sent down, ever since they set up the new website, the, um, there's a nice page for volunteers, uh -huh. so people um, will send in applications to the mayor's office, and they have them on file okay. and things, so they have um, people down there who are in the future interested, if it comes up, if an opening comes up, you know, and an mm -hmm. There's been there's been a turnover every every year. There's a couple. That's so, so you have like yeah. mm -hmm. great combination of people who have all this historical knowledge. Yep. And then new fresh ideas. Absolutely. Also. Yeah. Okay. And people who are in who are new, maybe new to town or who are involved in a certain program or, or league or something and, and want to come in and kind of see how it all works together and, and work with it. So yeah, it is nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I just good combination. I read an article in a paper last week. I forget who the mayor was that was doing a turnover with all the boards and so forth. And sometimes I think that's a really good idea because to me, if you're on a board for a period of whatever, 18, 20 years, that's a long time. And I have to agree with what Councilor Gina Luis Guerra is saying about new faces, mm -hmm. different ideas, a different vision. Yeah, it's a real good combination. Yeah. You have the people who know how things happened and why, how, how some park got to be like it is or why some program is like it is and what changed 10 years ago to make it that way. And then you have the new people who are coming in questioning like, okay, well, why is that? Oh, well, it's done this way from, you know, for this reason. So it is a really nice yeah. combination when you have, have that because you have fresh ideas or fresh questions of like, well, why is it, why don't you try it like this or, you know, so. Yeah, also good. to, you know, we approved, um, through our budget, a new credit, tax credit program. Mm -hmm. yep. our, is the recreation department going to be involved yep. with that for seniors? We are. And for veterans? We are on it for um, actually up at the pool for help with the um, reception area at the pool. So 
So, and actually, we just had a conversation with Patty today via email about if she's got anybody coming in. So she seems like she's got some good interest in different things, and she's interviewing different people in the coming weeks for the recreation. So for, yeah, she, I mean, they'll, they'll, yeah, to see where different people are going to fit in or what their interests are. So. Yeah, so that's exciting. I think that yep. is exciting. Yep. It's opening the doors, yep. and hopefully we'll add on again next year another added on amount of taxpayers in the city mm -hmm. so that we can keep them here to live in the city of Northampton. I thank you for that. I have one quick cool question. Mm -hmm. A bunch of people mentioned me that chili. 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 Yeah. Which I, yeah. I assume is a budget that we actually, well, there was. Let's say we're going to be meeting when the new superintendent comes into town, comes starts, and and with the school committee to start going through the agreement with the recreation usage mm -hmm. and the school usage and the swim team usage because mm -hmm. everybody has different temperatures they would like it at. So we want it warmer. Swim team wants it a little cooler. School <laughs> PE classes want it, you know, warmish. So right. you know, it's sort of it's a balancing act with, and then sometimes the equipment was breaking. They're actually getting a new. In the capital improvements, there's a new system. I think it's called Dectron system. There's a new mm -hmm. system that Central Services has put in for capital improvements to, because um, the system that's there is, is from when it was built 16 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that will help with the air quality and controlling the temperature oh, okay. and all that. So that's all in the works. Yeah, there is. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I've heard a lot of people yep. that, who have said that they would use it more. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, we hear that so, okay. sometimes too. With, and some, yeah, for the different. So we, we hope that it's a new system. I'm not sure the funding of it was, if it went through or not, it, but it's on capital plan through central services. So that would be nice if it Do we, did some. Um, do we also have programs available through the recreation department for children with special needs? Yep. Yeah, anyone can. We, we sometimes get um, kids at summer camp that I mean, we accommodate people as best we can with the different programs that we have. The pool is accessible um, with a, uh, a lift, um, summer camp. You know, we work with different groups. Sometimes they'll have um, aides that will come with them and be with them through the day. Sometimes we have a one-on-one, -on -one, we call it staff, who is assigned to that child for, for the duration of their um, camp stay with us if they need it. So, yeah. How about like busing? At one point there was some I attended some of the meetings with some of the parents, but that was with the problems that we've had down by Island Road. I think it was a soccer team. Oh, okay. yeah. But also, the question came up about busing for our youth here in the city of Northampton after school programs. Mm -hmm. How do you handle that if there is a problem of a child not being left behind yep. because of no transportation? Yeah, we don't we don't really program a lot of after school programs. Only on special like half days um, sometimes or like when they have um, for special events. So we don't have a regular after school program that we do in the schools. Each school kind of does their own. Okay. <coughs> like I know my kids go to Leeds. They have a, they have a special week after school program and after school care. But every school has their own okay. their own thing going on. Okay. So we we we've, we've actually <laughs> talked about getting into that in the future. Some kind of after school programming, collaborating with the school department, and I hope you know in the future with a new superintendent and maybe some stability in the future coming on. That's something we can. We would love to talk about that. that helping great. provide those kinds of things. So. Okay. And um, I think you also talked about the budget, which we know as counselors. Yep. The mm -hmm. fees, um, which were funded at 69 percent. About that, right? Around yep. that, yeah. And 31% is coming out of the general fund, correct? Yeah. Yep. Well, I'm very happy yep. about um, them changing a law through the CPA. Mm -hmm. well, it was about a year ago, I think mm -hmm. it was. I'm not sure about that. That's huge. Sure. That's a new for one for the for the kids. And it's everybody. it's open the doors. Mm -hmm. I mean, look what we're doing to Bridge Street School, mm -hmm. Plus Park. It's the best thing that could have ever happened. So, okay. what would you like us to do as counselors to, to move forward, to help you out in any which way we can? Are there, is there anything that you would like us to do to help you? Like, 
a million dollars? Uh, no. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, uh, no, I think I think just the um, the knowledge of how things work is a big thing because we we get a lot, you know, just and just being able to pass on knowledge and this this you know just being able to say this is what we do, you know, DPW does this, planning does this, you know, kind of the collaboration and, and the, the knowledge factor of who, you know, and, and always talking and asking questions when needed, you know, and I, and I think you do that anyway. If you have a question, you know, I'll get emails or calls like, yeah. how does this work and why why didn't this get done this way? Oh, okay, well that's because this department does that and this department, you know, so mm -hmm. just, you know, and I, and I know the lines of communication open. I think right. And I do nice. know that mostly everything that you do come in, no matter if it's funding or something, a new project, you explain it very, very thoroughly to us counselors, mm -hmm. and that's important. But and that's why we are such a vibrant city, because we work together. Mm -hmm. That's what makes Absolutely. it. Absolutely. This is great. Oh, okay. But try to talk to our council yeah, president sure. and come sure. in, because I think this is really yeah. excellent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you for Good. all Thank your you. hard work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Also, too, um, I'd like to introduce, and I, I apologize for this, the counselor from Ward 4, Jean Louis Scarra, and I'm sitting counselor Mary Ann LaBarge from Ward 6 in the chair. Thank you. Sorry. Tori, come right up here. Hi, can I come in? Yeah. Hi, Tori. Hi. Thank you for being here. Sure. Ruth is here. She's been taping our meeting since 4 o'clock. We have Channel 40. I think it's at 40. I think it's at 22. 22. Ruthie, I got a seat for you, too. Ruth, I'm coming. I'm going to get the camera set so I don't have to fuss with it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you okay. So much. Um, I since we don't start till five o'clock with the Commission on Disability, I would like to take some things out of order. Um, number nine, I would like to speak about the agenda for the month of July. For the month of July, right now. For the month of July, I have the Board of Health coming in around 4.05 p.m. to 4.50 p.m. And Meredith is excellent. She will give an excellent overall on the functioning of the Board of Public of Health, I mean the Board of Health, and also um, how many inspections they do, complaints that come in. I think you'll really enjoy having the Board of Health coming in. At 5 o'clock to 5.30 p.m., I think I'm pronouncing this correct, NAMI, which is apparently a new organization that um, we are bringing in to social services. And um, she did, uh, Ella Smolensky, did come to City Council and do a presentation. And I was very impressed with it. And I do know she might be coming to City Council, which I just suggested today in an email of coming in to talk about some of the family training programs that they have at the Cooley Dick. Since we got some time, I will talk about September um, agenda. I'm looking at Safe Passage, of which I've already got the clearance on that, coming in at 4.05 p.m. to 4.45. The Human Rights Commission from 5 o'clock to 5.30, and they get clearance on that. 
And I know with Alyssa and um, Councilor Gina Louise Guerra, we're looking at possibly Donna Bell, is that her name? Donna Bell. Yes. And I haven't heard back from Alyssa on that, if she definitely is coming or not. Mm -hmm. Then October right now, which I'm becoming really full house here, well, a lot of people coming in. October at 4.05, we have Joanne Campbell coming in from who is the Director of Valley Community Development. And I know that there will be a lot that Joanne will be talking about on affordable housing and about homelessness here in the city of Northampton. At 5 o'clock, we have Lynn Wallace, who is the Chair of the Northampton Housing Partnership, and that has been cleared. They will be coming in at 5.30 p.m., I also have um, Steve Connors coming in, our veterans agent. I want to go back up to July 21st, because I'm not sure if I missed this one. Um, Forbes Library, I have asked them to come in. Janet Moulton emailed me over the weekend, and it is a definite. They will be coming in at 5.30 p.m. On November, right now, I'm looking at possibly ServiceNet coming in because of the shelters being open, soup kitchen and all that, and getting other organizations to come in. Plus, we need more art and um, cultural recreation coming in also. Thank you. And I guess we don't have anybody here for the open for the public to speak, so we have, we can take a break for about five minutes. widespread um, braille menus throughout Northampton keep on improving over the years? It's wonderful. I recently had such a positive experience when I went to one of the local restaurants and I wasn't even thinking about it because I've been so used to not having the braille menus and then when I sat down and a server offered me a braille menu, I was thrilled and it was it was great. I could look at the menu with my sighted friend and be independent and not have to wait for her to read things and just look at what I wanted to look at and it just was wonderful. That's great. Now, do you think that this should be a movement that can spread to, you know, more and more cities? Like I know in Boston they don't really have too much of this. Do you think that that's something that would be like in the interest of everyone just to improve? I would love see that everywhere. I think everyone deserves to have equal access and that would be fantastic. Thank you very much. That's great. I appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. And it will be on. The City Councilor from Ward 7, Alyssa Klein, um, is not here today for this meeting. Um, she is out of town on her job. Okay. I, it is 5 o'clock. I'm opening up Social Services, Veterans, Cultural Recreation, and um, Tori Eklund, who is the Chair of the Northampton Commission on Disabilities. I want to thank you, Tori, for being here. We have Ruth McGrath, who also is the Secretary of the Commission on Disabilities. And we have Michael Nagy, who is here, who also is a member of the Commission on Disabilities. And he was a the Chair of the Committee on Disabilities for many, many years. And thank yes. you for all your hard work, Michael. Okay, Tori. Thank you for having us. You're welcome. And um, and I think you know Tori, Ruth, and Michael, the involvement it is with social services, veterans, and now we are cultural and recreation, um, of the importance of being here to show your visibility to counselors and I want to introduce the counselor from Ward 4, which is Gina Luis Sierra. Okay, and City yeah. Councilor yeah. Marion yeah. Labarge for yeah. the yeah. Okay, so Tori, you're going to talk on plans on collaborating with other 
area commissions on disability groups? Sure. So um, we have the agenda. Should I just go through the items one by one? Yeah, that was one of them on there. That was number one. That's okay, the that's perfect. Yeah. Okay. So yes, we had at a recent meeting, we had gotten the idea um, that we could perhaps be more visible and have more impact if we join forces with other local commissions on disability. So um, we are inviting at least the chairs and hopefully some members of um, other committees to our September meeting. And we thought that we would start with Amherst, Hadley, and East Hampton because those are geographically close to us and perhaps all together we would be able to make an impact on this area. Um, so that's a way to open dialogue, um, get to know them, have them get to know us and try to figure out what issues they're working on, what issues we're working on, and figure out ways that we can collaborate. So we're pretty excited about doing that. And Troy, I just wanted to let the commission know that I've made three calls already and I got a call back. Um, I don't have my paper with me. Joe, I think his name is from Strava. From Strava? Yes. Oh, Joe Trinelli. Yep, <coughs> him and I had a monthly talk today. Oh, he's And great. he definitely is coming. Oh, fantastic. For the round table. Some of the telephone numbers are going right into city halls of the towns and it's becoming difficult to try to reach other people. Mm -hmm. But I think Ruth is going to step in and she's going to help me. So I think we just won't do Amherst or Hadley. I'd like to see us get other towns involved also. And Tori, yeah. I agree with you 100%. You're opening up the doors, the commission is, of getting more people to work together. Yes, and we are also looking forward to having Janet Shaw from Stavros join us tomorrow night to, um, for us all to be able to work together with them as well. So. I also would announce um, we have another commission that just arrived. Attorney Winston is here. Thank oh, you for being oh, here. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. If you'd like to join us, you can grab a chair and pull up. Well, Wait a minute, let him get a chair. Sure. I want everybody to come. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to probably cut out, but thank you very much, everybody. It'll welcome. be on at um, 11 o'clock tonight. Um, hopefully, you guys can check it out. Thank there you. Thank 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 I've got a flat chair. Okay. 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 Um, so the next thing that we wanted to update you on would be uh, handicap parking. And we have been working with the DPW to have a handicap parking space in front of Birds on Maple Street in New Orleans. Um, it's gone through ordinance and transportation and now is awaiting um, city council approval. And I will be coming to city council on Thursday to just put in a word um, so for that because um, we feel that it's really important. Several residents of Florence have asked about it and said that it would be really helpful to them. And that's what we're all about is helping people in our community. So. We had also been requesting a handicapped space in front of Ms. Florence Diner, but um, as the ordinances were being reviewed, it was found that there was already an ordinance for a spot there. So um, it had just it had happened that um, the sign was never installed. So we've been in, we've been in touch with the DPW to ask for the installation of that sign. Um, I do have to say that we attended ordinance committee meeting, our ADA coordinator, Pat Shaughnessy and I, um, just about a week ago, mm -hmm. and there was a big problem here. The handicapped ordinance was placed way back in 1999, and wow. a sign never went up on the corner part yeah. where mm -hmm. the Florence Diner is. Yeah. So that's going up because we have good news. We, during ordinance, our handicapped 
spot in Florence at the OK from the Ordinance Committee, which is um, another handicapped parking going on the corner on Maple Street by Bird's store. So we've got two signs. So for them to go ahead and just go, it's like just put one up, they're going to put both of them up together, and we'll be all set. So we'll have a total of two handicapped parking, um, parking spots in Florence, and I think there's one down by on the corner by the bank, by the, bank, by the Florence Savings Bank. That has a right. sign. Yes. yes. And is there a date for the installation of the other two signs? We don't know yet until this is approved by City Council. Right. And I think it might. Is it coming, PME? Thursday, yeah. yeah but so they're going to wait for the sign that should have gone up in nine <coughs> no. until the next one. So that's why we're hoping, because of these two passing, that this will solve the problem and we'll be able to move on and get both of them installed. Thank you, Tori. We've also worked on um, sidewalk enhancements um, in front of City Hall. And um, does anyone, any, anyone, Mike, or anyone have anything they want to say about that? Well, yeah, there are a number of places where sidewalks could definitely be enhanced uh, downtown. Um, one is in front of the former Baptist Church. Uh, now being for years renovated and um, yeah the sidewalk is I tend to stay in the street as much as I can because that's pretty bad it's not really great right out in front of this building I mean in front of the church here no this building has this uh, a number of chunks outside so yeah, I mean there are just a number of places where those come up and I mean one of the things about using a chair is that you feel every bump. Oh, I can't yeah. step over them. I so yeah. you know, you go through every one and notice them particularly. Well, Michael, could you just explain where in this oh, location yeah. about the oh, sidewalk? No, it just uh, I just noticed just coming in that there were a couple of chunks out in right in front of in front of the chambers or on Main Street? No, in this building. In front of the chambers. Okay. Right in front of the chamber. I mean the yeah. chamber here. Yeah, it'd be. You know, I'm waiting for the technological development to get to fixing sidewalks. I know we could get a hold of Central Service and let them know about this, but after this meeting, maybe you could show us the area yeah. that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and Ruth also wanted to speak on sidewalks. And the original ones that I brought up to the commission in the meeting, right in the handicapped spot in the corner, right out in the parking lot between City Hall and, and this room, is all torn up. I've fallen twice there after night meetings, and when I fall, I can't get up again. I've been very lucky to have been guys around who could get me up, but that's very dangerous. And the other problem with that parking space is when you park in it, you've blocked the access ramp. You can't get up on the sidewalk. I have trouble with curves. I wear a brace on my leg, and my knees don't bend much, so when I fall, I'm down. Uh, in the other handicapped spot on the other side, you've also broken up sidewalk, but it's not as bad as this one out here. Didn't they just do work on yeah. the front? Last week. They're doing work in the parking lot this week, this past week, weren't they? On the building. Yeah. Oh, it was on the building, it wasn't on the parking lot. No, oh, they just closed the parking lot. Should we talk to Central Service about that also? Could you get a hold of them tonight? Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. And Michael will show us after the meeting where he's talking about and where Ruth is talking about. Mm -hmm. Because it's actually facts. If she does fall, she cannot get up. So an ambulance has to be called. <coughs> um, so the next agenda item was um, commission expenditures. Mm -hmm. Handicap parking. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought we did handicap parking. The HP, the, 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 the plates, the fines. On the oh, that, yeah, that's what I meant. I'm sorry. I, yes. thought, I thought you were. Never mind. I'm confused. I 
thought you were talking about um, no. the parking spaces. Yes, the um, that's what I see. That's our big. <laughs> yes. Um, so we were able to um, purchase a sound system for use at our meetings, which has been wonderful and helped a lot. Um, and we've also purchased a banner for use at um, COD exhibits and programs. Yeah, as well as for carrying in parades, and we talked yeah. about about doing that. So that's good. I think um, Ruth, you probably should speak about because you suggested about getting the banner, and we did get it about the visibility at the senior center. And you can talk because you do quite a bit of work with the volunteering for like the senior center for the health fair and that mm -hmm. and Michael this year also came in and helped us out with that. Right, we had a table at the health and safety fair in May at the senior center and the banner was right on the front. Last year we had a table with no banner, just a white tablecloth and a few flyers and most everybody just walked by because they had no idea who we were, what mm -hmm. we were representing. So this year oh, we got a lot more publicity, a lot more um, exposure. And can you talk about, either Tori or you or Michael, talk about the budget. What did we have in the budget for what, three, four years? No money. No can you talk about <laughs> what had happened? I'll let Tori that. We didn't have money to do anything. There was nothing in the budget. There was nothing. We couldn't do anything. We couldn't even, like, print some flyers or do anything and um, now that we have the money from the HP parking fine. And how did that happen? It happened because you and um, former counselor Casey uh, looked into that and made it happen. Exactly. And that's why there is importance of social services, veterans, and recreation and culture because if Counselor Casey, which also belonged to this committee with us, I invited him to come to the Senior Center and he did and he talked about and he heard the voices saying, especially the ADA coordinator, there was no money in the budget. We couldn't breathe, we couldn't do anything, we couldn't no. expand, okay? Him and I got together. We went through and looked at how do other cities or towns, how do they get that money? It took us a while, it took several months. We worked with the financial director at that point and there it was. We found a way of doing it through the internal revenue and we put the um, handicap plates with their fines in place and we have now a good amount of money in our financial fund, which we never had. Mm -hmm. And I think it's great because Ruth has started, you could talk about the library part that you're doing. And we, we now have a library for the uh, commission. It has copies of all the minutes, all the agendas, any e emails we get, literature we get, uh, there are a lot of groups who send us catalogs, um, all different kinds of information. Um, we have contact with other disability groups that have sent us their minutes. They're all available in a large white binder, which is kept at the senior center where we have our meeting. Sure. It's just been great. Having the sound system has really made it better um, for our meeting. Um, Especially um, with members who are either partially deaf or deaf yeah. and I being partially deaf was the greatest thing that could ever happen because I can hear what people are saying at our, at our commission meetings. It's so valuable yeah. and I think the price on that we paid was 4000 and something. Else. something. 200 and something, I think. 4200 and exactly. And we had the money to do it, yes. which is, is amazing. Um, mm -hmm. And now we're really able to, to do things, to increase our visibility, which is actually the next 
item on the agenda is ways that we want to increase our, our visibility. Um, we have that banner and um, we will be wanting to use that at parades and at different events to let people know what we're doing um, and also to be able to <coughs> start collaborating with other committees and other groups and other agencies. Right. And what has happened was because we did the ordinance and worked it out with Chris Connell, the former financial director, not realizing at that time, even he didn't pick it up, that we have changed the Mass General Law. So we have to change the Committee on Disabilities to the Commission on Disabilities. Uh -huh. That's where the big change was. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, Troy, thank you. Okay. So next we have um, my favorite thing, success of Braille and large print venues um, and possible plans to expand to other restaurants. And I have to say, personally, I, I w this true story, what I told the person from Channel 22, um, I went to Siam Square with my friend for lunch and I wasn't even thinking about it. I was, it was the weekend, I was just relaxing and I'm used to not having everything accessible. So I was just not even thinking about it. I was thinking, oh, you know, she'll read the menu to me as usual. And um, the server came over to the table and said, oh, we have a braille menu. Would you like to use it? I was like, <laughs> I was so excited. It was so fun and nice to just be able to look at the stuff myself. She could be looking at seafood and I could be looking at, you know, chicken and we didn't have she didn't have to be reading everything out loud to me. And it was such a great feeling. It was so wonderful. I was so happy. It just it made my day. And where was this? This was at Siam Square. Uh -huh. And they had the wherewithal to be observant and to ask me if I wanted that very respectfully, very nicely, and it was um, it was great. So I would love to see and encourage more restaurants to do that. I've actually noticed that they also have like proudly display a, a sign in their window saying that they have Braille mm -hmm. menus. Um, and I haven't other I haven't seen other restaurants really take that step. But I think it's fabulous. Yeah, I think it would be an I think it would be a good idea for the city perhaps to you know just put out a little a three by five or just a little visible card for places to put. Or on their website, the city's website. Yeah. They should put so that on their website. Yeah, I don't see. On the website. Because I don't know what the restaurants are. Actually, I had a guy. Well, we uh, have a list of them. That I, I know. But. And I know Patty did tell you, Michael, at one of our meetings that she made them up and brought them to the restaurants. Oh, okay. Right. But, yeah, apparently they're not. If they're not using them, I know. can we get a city ordinance to require that they use them? Hmm. I don't know why we have to do that. Is the commission on the website? Yes. I'm sorry? And are it's they listed on just the coming up. We were asked yes. by Joanne at the Senior Center who's going to be doing it. I used to do it. She's taking it over now. She's asked us for things that we'd like included, so that would be the perfect thing to give to her. And idea. I'll see her tomorrow awesome morning, thing. so I will bring it up to her. Thank you. That would be great, yeah. I just have to tell you, that just made my day, it made my weekend. <laughs> it was so great. Why don't you yeah. give, But they do have to step up at the entrance, so I can't get it. <laughs> well, that's not okay. No, it's not. That's not okay either. They need to fix that next. Maybe you can give a little history, Tori, if not Ruth, about, and Michael, you were involved with it with us, correct? About the Braille note. Uh, uh, Braille how note. this all came about. Well, um, you brought it up at one of our meetings, right? As I, as, as I recall, I was going to have you. Oh, okay. I went to. I brought it up because I happened to go to Applebee's and they offered me a braille menu, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Wow, that was great! Why can't we have that in Northampton, and why can't more restaurants do that?" So we were talking in one of our um, well, back then they were committee meetings. Now they're commission meetings. Mm -hmm. And I had suggested that that might be a good project to work on. Um, 
and we partnered with the bid um, who actually underwrote the project and paid for the menus, which was extremely helpful. So um, I had gotten information, um, the Talking Book Library for the wine, um, the, the branch for Massachusetts is in Watertown, and they do that, they provide that service. They do um, translation of menus into Braille. Um, and I don't, they didn't, the large print was just done um, locally here, I think, because that'd be easier to do. But, um, so we collaborated with the bid. Um, the menus were done, and each restaurant is given two copies. Like they each get two braille menus, and I believe two large print menus, mm -hmm. and then they're updated annually. So um, it's pretty good. I mean, there may be minor changes in between. Things are always changing, but it's it's pretty good. I I when I went to Siam Square that time, it was completely right on. Like what I ordered and the price and everything was right consistent with. Um, the print menu, so and, and it worked this, out really well. And this was not an easy chore because, and I think Tori, if you can recall in the commission now, that it was a hold back on this for a period of time and we didn't sit back. We said, nope, we're not gonna let it ride. And if you can recall, Tori, I distinctly said to you, we're not gonna let it stop. We're gonna move on with this. And we did. Yes, we did. You know, and it's, it was it took us some time, but we're hoping to open the doors to some of the restaurants up in Florence. That'd be great. Yes, mm -hmm. because everything is seems like it's centered to Northampton, but we have people with disabilities up in Florence also. Yes, we do. I'm one so, of them. Ruth, I don't know if you want to talk much about it. And, um, I can tell you that my husband and I both have used the large print menus at two different restaurants. Which ones were those? I don't remember. It was it was a little while ago. It was not long after we instituted them. Um, I carried those glasses in my pocketbook. So he doesn't have his glasses. That large print menu is invaluable. <laughs> <laughs> he hates it when I read it to him. <laughs> That's great. Um, I think Paul and Elizabeth is one of them, mm -hmm. right? Oh, that's right. Because yeah. Michael had suggested that, and we did that's go in and see question. them, and oh yeah, so we did hand deliver their their menus too. Yeah. Um, and then we have the I think that's Willie's is is it oh Eastside Grill? Eastside Grill. Is there is one. Yeah. Yeah. I was staying in the Cuzo because he yeah. was a former owner, so we had him come to one of our meetings. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, of course, he was still with the bid then before right. he retired, so mm -hmm. he, he helped us do that. He helps a lot. Well, what was the other ones? Was it What's the process to get a restaurant to sign on? Um, oh. They were all, I believe they were all sent a letter, okay. and they were given the opportunity, and it was voluntary. And I have to say, there are some restaurants that I really like that I would, and that I go to all the time, that I was disappointed that they didn't sign on because they know me. Maybe they just need some lobbying. So maybe it could just be that, you know, they, so right. maybe the next time I go to one particular one, I will remind, I will ask them and remind them. Mm -hmm. One that they know me really well and I've been going there for years and I go there frequently. Right. I know Dan Yacuzzo and I forget the girl's name that was the secretary there. She has left yeah. now. Yeah. They had a lot of meetings with restaurant owners. Mm -hmm. It was not an easy job. Because it was a bad timing, we were under going into a recession, and money was tight. So, what's the cost to a restaurant to do this? There's no cost to them. As well, the, the, bid, the bid has been so they belong to the bid. So, why would a restaurant care about it because they don't belong, belong to the bid? Because they didn't belong to the bid. Oh, they didn't want to have to right. I see what you're saying. Okay, so the so restaurant has one. It's a pretty, it's a pretty minor cost to a restaurant. I, I don't want to be quoted as saying an exact cost, but I mean it, dep and it varies. It depends on the size and the length of the menu. But we're talking maybe average, maybe like sixty dollars to do it. Like say if a restaurant um, were not part of the bid and wanted to do this on their own and pay for it just because they 
felt that it was the right thing to do, which it is, um, it's, we're not asking them to pay hundreds of dollars to do it. Yeah, they'll need to have as many of those menus as right. they have the others. If they, exactly. Yeah, they have a right. few. Like in the, two, right. Time. Right, and then they make sure that their staff is trained, that if they see someone right. that looks like that, they're visually impaired. To offer that. Yes. Well, I mean, the good news is, you know, that the, the rules around participation is a bit of change. And yeah. um, which has had its own issues, but so it it will soon be that if the bid moves forward and attempt to well, it's too soon. Yeah. Yeah. In the federal court, right. So. But if That's if everything were to move forward and there everyone needed to participate, that would probably open a lot of oh yeah, it's good name for doors for <laughs> restaurants to participate in this program, right? And there'll be some anger yeah. thing. Well, it's really by the, I mean, it's a whole other topic, but it's divided the city, for example, too. Yes, yes. Mm. But the good news will be for Braille menus. Is what yeah. That's yeah. One, that, yeah. I'm trying yeah. to focus on yeah. the positive, yeah. which yeah. is that if there's good. still participation, right. 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 whether mandatory or not, yeah. then all the restaurants can comply with having mm -hmm. Braille menus. Yeah, I mean, even like the friendlies. Yeah. Friendlies I mean, I would right. go right. Out, right. out there to Florence, talk with the manager. Never got a response. The, the yeah. only th they should have more flexibility because friendly is their still corporate structure, and if one restaurant does it, I think they have to get approval. But for the restaurants that are down here, it. right? That ex exactly. Mm -hmm. But the restaurants it. down here that just have one single owner, right. that should just be an easy decision to do. It's a relatively minor cost. The big thing is education. Yeah, exactly. The big thing with every disability, every function. It, the people have to be educated. They have to know that even that it's available. And we went to Friendly's mm -hmm. and talked with the manager to work on Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk to the owners of my favorite restaurant that didn't do it. Um, Who was that? Uh, India House. Uh -huh. India House. Because I love that restaurant. And oh, that's the one on... Um, Sun State Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and yeah. I've been in there once. Oh, so they're, they're, um, they're they have They have amazing food and it would be just great if they could have a consciousness to become wheelchair accessible and also to do the braille menu so um, I'm going to try to I bet you they'll do there it. There is outdoor seating in the summer so yeah. right. I guess you have to see the middle section. So yeah. Michael you can only eat there in the <laughs> summer. Right. There are a lot of places where I can only eat. Yeah in the summer. Really? Uh, well that's that's the kind that's what, that's what this commission is about. Recognizing right. those. Recognize and and yeah, but that's serious better. with what he just said. No, it is serious. Yeah. I agree. It is serious. It is. It definitely needs to be better. And we also had concerns from Rodney Kunis. Do you remember mm -hmm. at JFK? And we were with Comcast when they had that hearing going on. And um, closed caption he talked about. He also talked about civil rights, about his rights of being completely deaf. Okay, mm -hmm. not being able to know what's going on with city council meetings on TV or yep. anything, and it, it's a big concern here, and it is a civil rights issue. It is, uh, absolutely. Um, the next yep. item is um, that we will continue to work with PDTA on paratransit van service and encourage them to um, make that the best it can be. Um, we have had representatives from um, PDTA and um, Hughes Transportation, which is the, the, the contractor, the PDTA con, um, subcontracts to Hughes Transportation. Right. And Hughes Transportation actually runs the service. Um, we've had them come to several meetings. There have been ongoing concerns that um, myself and other consumers of that service, um, passengers, whatever, um, have had in terms of just driver courtesy and appropriate scheduling and um, things like that. So it's been helpful to touch base with them once or twice a year to just um, remind them that we're here and we're watching and we expect to have yeah. good service. And I, um, similar to the Braille menus, I also have my personal interest in that because I use the service to go to work every day. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when they mess up, my they you mess would you like to talk about it? Did you want to say anything? Anyone else want to talk about it? No, I, I use PBTA all the time. 
Yep. And now that I'm retired, I don't use them every day anymore. But I can really see where your concern comes in. Because if they don't show, I don't get to work. Mm -hmm. yep. But now, well, you know, now it's if they don't show, I don't get to the movie. Well, that's not good either. You know, well, no, it, it isn't good at all. But anyway, um, you know, I have been struck by the newest um, kind of PDPA thing is that you call, tell them when you want your ride, and then they call you back the night before your ride and tell you when they're going to do it. With an automated system. With a yard oh, This is custom, this is for customer, I'm customer 2385, <laughs> if anyone ever wants to know. 2848. <laughs> Sounds like a, a recording of a record. It you know, really is. Songs. And it's all spliced together. Oh, it's horrible. It's like, it's, um, I oh. think it's just, it's, it's a reflection of the increased dehumanization in our society where, you know, every time you call anything, you get like a complicated voicemail menu and it takes at least 10 minutes to get to a human being. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of like similar now. They don't, they can't even have human beings call us. We have this. <laughs> so I wonder if there's any complaints coming in about it. I wonder. Um, I find it to be tolerable but annoying. What I find to be intolerable and beyond annoying is when drivers are rude or um, don't show up. I have many stories which I'm not going to share here because um, but there it's like it's unbelievable things have happened. Um, there are times to be fair when it runs perfectly smoothly and things are great but when they don't it's really important and people can be really damaged by that. Could you give some examples because we do have time? Sure. I just didn't want to. No. Um, you know, time. I'm very passionate on this topic. So, um, okay. So I will give some examples. And Michael, you use it too, so feel free to okay. tell and me. Ruth. And Ruth, do you use it? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. I didn't think so. Um, so I got on the van one morning and I asked the driver. I said, "Are we going straight to my office, or are we making any stops along the way?" I like to know because I like to sort of know how long my ride is going to take, and it's a reasonable question I have a right to know. And I also can't see to know if we're stopping somewhere. So the driver said to me, it's not my job to talk to you. I'm not going to answer that question. You're, you'll get there on time. That's all you need to know. I said, excuse me? <laughs> I said, I have the right to know, and I'm asking you, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you, you know, I'm going to ask you again. Can you please give me that information? I can't see, I need the information. She refused to give me the information. So I said, all right, that's fine. I'll just use my cell phone and I'll call dispatch and I'll get the information from them and I'll also report your behavior. That's totally fine with me. So I did and I told dispatch what was happening and I reported her behavior. She still wouldn't talk to me and they were very angry and um, called her in and watched the video of the way that she had treated me and um, I'm assuming that some kind of disciplinary action took place. They told me that they had done something and I, I'm not allowed to know what and mm -hmm. that's fine but um, that was pretty awful and had I not been me and had the wherewithal, first of all, to have the privilege of having a cell phone and to have the privilege of having the ability to make the call and speak coherently when I was enraged mm -hmm. and scared that this person might take out her anger on me because she was driving me. Probably in retrospect wasn't the smartest thing to do, but um, I needed to do it because I needed to know what was happening mm -hmm. in my world and I needed to do that. So. Um, Let's see, that's an is, it, is there video on every vehicle? Yeah. Oh, that's great. So the they can always go back. They just pull the video. Oh, that's great. And I said to the person, I said to the person that I spoke to to do the complaint, I said, um, I said, you know, I was not rude to this driver, and I said, but theoretically, even if I was, you ever heard that saying, the customer is always right? Like mm -hmm. the person providing the service needs to be the bigger person and do the right thing. Um, so that was one example. So another example fairly recently, 
I'm walking towards the van, and this driver says to me, Come on, it's okay. I'm going to come to get you. And I said, Please stop patronizing me. And then I realized that he probably didn't even know what patronizing meant. <laughs> and he said, he said, oh, okay, I'll stop. And I'm like, obviously you didn't understand because you're continuing to do it. Um, <laughs> and it was just like that the whole way with just sort of rude and tantalizing comments. And then when we got off and um, I clear, I obviously, I had like my this big work bag here and all my stuff like in my right hand. So he walks over to my right side with my full hand and tries to have me to take his arm on that side. And I said, um, you need to move over to the other side because I have stuff in that hand. He's like, well, okay, you don't have to be rude about it. And I said, um, really? It's just being obvious. Um, so things like that. Then there's another woman who Michael, you'll know who I'm talking about. I'm not going to name names because mm-hmm. the point is not to like yes. hurt people, but um, Michael knows. She, despite the fact that I have repeatedly told her that my disability is um, not in my hands, so that putting my seatbelt on is not a problem, she'll just like reach over, Mm -hmm. invade my personal space, and put my seatbelt on. Mm -hmm. Um, And she is very patronizing and annoying as well. She's like, hi, how are you? Okay, we're going to go now. You know, it's like, it's stuff like that that people shouldn't have to tolerate when they just want to go to work. Mm-hmm. Um, so, have you had stuff like that? Take uh, well, uh, you probably have. Uh, well, probably not quite as much because I'm not a, I'm not female. Oh, that's um, true. And you so don't use it every day, as you said, like I do. Yeah, and um, I mean, female is another part of the equation. Mm-hmm. My issues with them have tended to be less personal with drivers and more like I had a ride, you know, and like I say, I don't use them often now, but I had a ride scheduled and so I'm outside waiting for the ride and the guy just cruises past. So my PCA, you know, kind of went out and to figure out, you know, what is this guy's problem? And and you know, and, and told him that this is where you go, and and then you know, which is, um, it's not something that I I suppose I would think that in running a good business you would prepare drivers for where it is that they should be going to pick up people. Um, but yeah, it's and you know, like I say, my beef with them now is that you get a call the day before you're supposed to travel. Telling you what time. Telling you what time. And that time, you know, it kind of inevitably. It could be any time. So it's not the time you've asked for. No, it's not the time you've asked for. Well, it's the time they can fit you in. Right, it's not the time. What if you have an appointment to get to? So if you have an appointment at (coughs) 9 o'clock, they could pick you up at like 7.45 and you could be sitting outside the building for an hour. Like let's say it's a place that doesn't open until 9. Right. Like that. Exactly. I mean, you will be there at but the time you're supposed to be. But, there's no but, but you really don't know. You could be there, you know, two hours or on the other side of. So they bring you out in front of a building. What about wintertime when it's cold out? They just leave you outside? I don't know, to be fair, because like I primarily use it for work, and I can get into my building anytime. And I don't know what they would do if I couldn't. So I don't really know. Yeah, this would be a good thing to do to get an update. Um, it would be. I mean, I think. Yeah, I, I would like to talk to. Yeah. EPA. We should bring them. We'll. We'll. Yeah, we should bring them in in the mm-hmm. fall. I think. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. So, um, I have had. Other, I mean, I've had scheduling issues too. Like I've had drivers be late, and um, oh, this is a really good one. This this will this will give everyone a good laugh. I'm laughing about it in retrospect. I just think it was funny at the time. So um, I'm standing by the door, waiting for my ride, and for some reason I didn't hear um, the telltale like the beep, you know, that the van was coming. Mm-hmm. Because I don't know why they didn't back up, they didn't beep, and no one, none of the sighted members of my household were home. And the driver didn't come to the door to let me know they were there. 
So I had no idea that the van was there, so I get a call on my phone, and they said, your ride is out there, and they're about to leave. And I said, really? I said, well, I've been standing right here waiting, and no one let me know they were there. And the guy said, can't you see them out there? <laughs> I said, do you know who you're talking to and what my disability is? Like, are you aware of who you're calling and what my situation is? And this was a dispatcher that I knew. It wasn't anyone new. It's one that I've known, you know, and that knows me, and I know they know me. And then he was just like, oh, I'm sorry. I reported that to you. That should not have been said to me. Oh, that was terrible. I did have one bad episode with just why we don't use the buses at all. You might remember it was, remember when we had the demo down here about the new buses? Yep. I can't get into a bus because there's stairs and I have mm -hmm. trouble with stairs. The new ones are nice. They lay down and I can walk right up. Yeah, mm -hmm. don't they flatten but, down? And yeah, yeah, but I still have a problem because to get my leg to move, I have to swing it. Yeah. And the, the width of the door isn't wide enough right. for me to swing right. my foot and get in. When my husband got a Japanese tent and we decided to try and figure out the bus route, mm -hmm. we got as far as the first bus. The driver got out, took his hands, and tried to push me up by my butt. Oh. That was the end of that. That's, <laughs> that's not good. Bill was no. ready to flatten him. I mean, it was just. That's not good. It's not that I couldn't lift myself up. I couldn't swing my leg enough to get it past the side of the door. You know? Right, right. Yeah, and we have never done a bus again since then. And you're right. Yeah. Of what you've been saying, education is very, very valuable. Mm -hmm. And I think now with having a round table in September and getting the other commissions from other towns coming in and making that bridge. We work together show the visibility here here we are and the banner is going to be excellent and yeah. we'll be working on that for the veterans day parade and hopefully we can find some children to hold the sign for the commission um and ruth i've been told that you were going to be speaking about prevention oh yeah I'm going to skip the first part and introduce myself. I'm the secretary for the Northampton Commission on Disability. She does a I, wonderful job. <laughs> thank you. I paid you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh -uh. I've, <laughs> I've been asked to present to you the two park benches the commission is going to purchase to be placed in the center of Florence. It's the vibrant sidewalk resolution, which will be coming before city council in the near future, should include Florence. These benches will help make the center of Florence more neighbor friendly provide a welcome resting place for families, senior citizens, and the disabled. I have a picture of the six foot bench that is being considered. <laughs> These benches are so much of the benches outside the Council on Aging. And the City Council of Barge is going to discuss location of the benches. Okay, we've done uh, Patricia Shaughnessy, I, and Alyssa Klein. Council from Ward 7, who's on our committee, um, did a site visit together. Uh, I don't remember the dates on it. It was probably about two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And we looked at over by Bird Store on the corner. And then we also looked at the wheat pizza by the post office and also right by the Florence Diner in the front and there's a nice maple tree or whatever kind of a tree that is there. So I went into the restaurant because a very dear friend of mine owns it and uh, lives on my street and I brought her, I wanted them to meet her so I, we waited for her, for Leah to come in on duty at the Florence Diner. So she finally came in, I went and got her told her I wanted her to meet the counselor from Ward 7 and our AD coordinator, Pat Shaughnessy, and what her thinking was. And right away we told her what we wanted to do about the benches, that we wanted to open the doors on vibrant sidewalks, and that's the reasons for benches, is to make it friendly. The only places where we have benches in Florence is one at the bus stop by Valley Medical. It's a bench, just like we have a shelter mm -hmm. one here. And then at the park of the fountains. Okay. Is that 
to me, a lot of people don't like to cross the street and go over there and sit. Some people do like it. But I feel with the city of Northampton, we have adventures. I lived down here in Northampton all my life, and I think it's the greatest thing that can happen for seniors, people with disabilities, for sitting down with your children and, and meeting different people. That's what you call vibrant sidewalks because of adventures. So we went back on another site visit, and Alyssa could not attend that one because she had to do something that following morning with her work. So Richard Pasoletti, who's the superintendent of streets, I and Pat Shaughnessy and Jim Larillo met. And it was amazing because Jim Larillo said, you know, counselor, he said, I can't believe that you never have put me benches on your sidewalk. And I said, well, Patty brought pictures of what we'd like to do on the Commission on Disabilities of donating two of them. And Jim Larillo was going to, he's on the board for the Florence Business Association to bring it to their attention of what the Commission on Disabilities would like to do. And if you look at the prices, we're not positive yet if it's lower or it could be a little bit higher, okay? Um, but it would have plaques that the company does design. Our commission would talk about it at our next meeting tomorrow, tomorrow on what we would like for a statement on the plot, so it's something for all the commissioners to think about. And also, we'll have to do a financial order. That will have to come to City Council for approval of that money so that we can order the benches. Okay. And we need to wait for Jim Marillo, um to let us know about what occurs at the Florence Business Association that he really feels that's not going to be a problem. And if there is, then we will have a meeting. And it will be a public hearing, and we will have many, many people who are disabled that will attend that meeting. So I just wanted to let you know, Councilor Stira, I think it's a six-foot six bench. Okay. Yep. And um, is there any talk about maybe doing some fundraising around the businesses? Uh, we're, for we're, more? Yeah, we're, we're to, you know. We're just going to use our money for it. We have it. Okay. Okay, because fundraising, our commission, mm -hmm. okay, like Tori works all day, she can't go out with fundraise. Michael, he probably could talk with people, but you're looking at a tremendous amount of money here. Right, I just meant if any of the businesses, I mean, they also will benefit from having a bench. Well, they will, but they could donate themselves. Right, if whether they, they wanted, wanted to donate. Yeah, yeah, we put in some more. Right, mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. <laughs> put in a couple more. The other thing with fundraising, the bench is donated by us for public plaque with our, our exactly. mission on it, which is another way for us to get ourselves out there. Yeah. If somebody yeah. donates, they're going to want to have their name as well. That's true. Yeah. Really. So, yeah. that's, that's right. Oh, that was it. That's great. That's wonderful. And maybe if you could give a little update, because I told you you were working with Alyssa Klein. We do have a resolution last year that right. came to City Council, passed the first reading, and with the second reading there was a little problem with the language on it, so it went back to economic development, housing and land use, back into ordinance, and then came back to us. But the language was changed. I don't have a problem with the language. But anyway, I've so fire at Yeah, yes. and we're working on coming up with a date to have at least one um, public meeting where people can talk about, you know, the, the whole point of this resolution is to sort of state publicly as a city how we feel our downtown sh should be welcoming to all people. And, um, mm -hmm. and so, but, you know, everyone has different opinions, and so we would like to have at least one public forum where people can kind of talk about how what they feel that means and um, mm -hmm. and help us kind of refine that language. So that would be great. Yeah, yeah, so we're working on a, on that a would be update that would be wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Um, because I, one idea that I've had surrounding this is um, that um, places with one step up, mm -hmm. of which there are numerous one step um, it should have, and I haven't tested this out yet, 
but I'm thinking that a 20 inch ramp would be adequate for someone like me to get up and for certainly people who are in push wheelchairs mm -hmm. um, could get up. Now, the problem with that is, is it's not ADA allowable. I mean, ADA says one inch of rise for one foot of run. So the typical nine inch step would need a nine foot ramp. And that's not going to work that way. So, um, the idea, or the crazy scheme that I'm coming up with, would be to have this um, 20 inch ramp be available. Um, and one way to make it available would be to have it in a, uh, a lock circumstance, something that requires a key mm. to get into. So the person could get in with the key, use the ramp, and they wouldn't then possess the ramp for that period of time. Mm so that you could bypass the ADA requirements because it's their ramp. Mm. And Do you have examples of what, are, what maybe other towns and other towns where you have kind of old downtowns where you have these situations where No, I actually I don't. I mean, I, I, just could, I came up with this idea like last Thursday, mm -hmm. so it's not really well developed. But yeah, it would be, yeah, it would be interesting to find out Maybe uh, you could research it. Yeah, I'm going out. And, um, and we do have our city solicitor who's excellent, especially with all the resolutions and ordinances that we have. He looks at them, and if he feels it's not a go, that there needs to be language oh, yeah, change, right, he's right. going to do that. So, well, like I say, this is right. I, we're working new. on. We're working on five days here, so. Yeah, but th that, that definitely has potential. So, you know, and yeah. you should call Jim Lorillo at the Board of Public Works and talk to him, Michael. Maybe he could guide you. And I know, I mean, you and I talked about this back in was it February. Um, you talked to me about the, the issue you have with these step ups, and um, yeah, it would just be interesting. To, so I know that you've been working on this for a while, and obviously. Yeah, they're trying to think about how I can yeah. get into these right. Yeah. yeah. I just wonder, if, yeah, if there are other towns that have are working on solutions as well. I should think they make it mandatory. I think this is something we could bring up at our round table too. Uh -huh. see what other towns are doing. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, I, I am interested to see yeah. how this breaks down. Right. Well, we have we our other here, committee right? meetings out there waiting to yes. come in. Okay. Thank so, you so we want to thank you all very much for being here. Thank you here. so much thank for you. having us. This was wonderful. Thank You're you welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Remember, watch TV tonight, 11 o'clock. Yeah, 11 o'clock. Uh -huh. Thank you. Michael, you'll probably be on it with her because I think you have the camera. Yeah. <laughs> and wait for us.